Okay, this is a video for section 9.2, the ionic bond. This discussion that we're about to have applies specifically and particularly to group 1A and group 12A metals. Um, basically, my friends, what this comes down to is this. In this chapter, you're going to be learning about how atoms form compounds. And there's two ways in which atoms are chemically bound to each other to form compounds. The first way that we're going to talk about is the ionic bond. Ionic bond. Okay. Basically, the ionic bond generally tends to be formed between a metal and a nonmetal. As far away from each other on the periodic table as they can possibly be, as you learn later on about this thing called electronegativity, you'll determine or discover that the further away they are on the periodic table, the more likely they are to form this thing called an ionic bond. So again, it's a metal and a nonmetal in general, in particularly group 1A and 2A metals, with nonmetals that are way over on the other side of the periodic table, like 7A or 6A. Okay. So we'll do a few examples, and you'll kind of get the, the gist of what we're talking about when we do this. Okay. So let's say we're going to form a compound between lithium and fluorine. Now, if we draw the Lewis structure for lithium, I put a dot there and a dot there, or not Lewis dot structure, but Lewis dot diagrams, or Lewis dot structures, and... Um, Oh, sorry, one too many dots for our lithium. Sorry about that. It only has one valence electron. Come on. Don't give me a hard time here. The eraser won't come up. I don't know why. Let's try it again. There's the eraser. All right. Come on, eraser. Come on. Erase. Anyway, I don't know why the eraser won't work, but this dot does not belong there. There's only one dot. And of, chlor of course, fluorine has its seven valence electrons. And I might be putting them in a little different spot than <clears throat> is um, given in uh, the first reading that you did, but it's not a fear. It's not a worry. Nothing to, not a big deal. So as the lithium and the fluorine react with each other, the lithium is oxidized, and that electron is transferred over to the fluorine as the fluorine is reduced. And we get lithium with a plus charge, and of course we get a fluoride ion, which now has one extra electron and an F minus ion. Okay? Now, the lithium ion, as you can see, is positively charged. The fluoride ion is negatively charged, and just basically due to their electrostatic attraction, the two are attracted to each other, and the attraction between them is called the ionic bond. Very simple. The metal generally tends to be oxidized. The nonmetals tend to be reduced. They form the lithium ion, which is our cation and we form the fluoride anion and that's supposed to be a cation and there you go it's very simple let's try another example okay let's try something a little more complicated like two calcium atoms reacting with oxygen, forming calcium oxide. So our calcium atom, which does have two valence electrons, and our oxygen, right, which has six valence electrons, like so. One electron, as the metal is oxidized, goes there. One electron, 
leaves and goes there. What do we get? We get our calcium 2 plus ion, and we get our oxide, which now has eight valence electrons around it, two negative ion. You've got your cation now. You've got your anion now. The two are attracted to each other electrostatically, and therefore they produce the ionic bond. So it's that electrostatic attraction between the two that forms the ionic bond. And let's try one more. Let's try lithium and oxygen. That gives us lithium oxide. Whoops. This should probably be a 4. This is for you, Ben. This is a 4. That's going to be a 2. And that will balance that out. Okay. So the lithium with its 1 dot. The oxygen with its 6 dots. We're going to need a second lithium because the oxygen is going to want to gain two to form the oxide. Okay, so we're going to get two lithium positive ions and we're going to get our oxide ion, which I'm going to draw down here. And there will be an electrostatic attraction between the oxide and the lithium and it's going to form our ionic bond and we'll get our ionic compound. Now what we haven't been showing you in the structures that we've been drawing is the fact, or not the fact, but is what's going on with the electron configurations. So if we do our lithium, which is 1s2, 2s1, that is an s, and our fluoride from before, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p, five, what's happening is that one electron is leaving, going over the 2p, so our lithium ion ends up 1s2, and is isoelectronic with helium, and our fluorine, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, is now isoelectronic with neon, so it becomes isoelectronic with helium, this one becomes isoelectronic with neon. So by gaining electrons, the fluoride gets a noble gas configuration, and by losing electrons, the lithium gets a noble gas configuration. They both end up with configurations that are equivalent to that of a noble gas. And we say that with the word that we use for that is isoelectronic. I'll write it down. Isoelectronic is the term. Okay, and let's take a look at another example of that. We'll go back to the other example we did with the calcium. So the calcium and the oxygen forming calcium oxide, and yes, I don't have the O, the 2 for the O there. I could put it in there and balance the thing. That way Ben will be happy, but um, let's focus in on the calcium itself with its two valence electrons and the oxi oxygen with its six. All right, and we're going to lose one electron here, right? And we're going to lose one electron here, right? So this is going to, calcium is kind of a big element. And on the periodic table, it's in period four.